Where are they now? The cast of Iron Man. Welcome back to Where Are They Now? A place to look back at the movies that you loved so much growing up and find out what happened to the cast that made them so special. Today we're looking at the marvelous superhero film Iron Man that took the entire world by storm in 2008 and quite literally changed Hollywood forever. Number 10. Far into here. Raza. Pakistani-American actor Farhan Tahir was tasked with playing the villain Raza in Iron Man, the man who essentially laid the path for the superhero character. He didn't have a super huge role, but Tahir did a great job with his performance and received a ton of praise. Tahir is a hard-working actor who has been around for years, previously appearing in the Disney live-action remake of The Jungle Book in the 1990s and Picture Perfect alongside Jennifer Aniston. After Iron Man, Tahir continued to work a lot in projects such as The West Wing, Lost, Hawaii Five-0, and more. He has also popped up in projects like Elysium and 2009 Star Trek. You may have last seen him alongside Iron Man co-star Jeff Bridges in the FX show The Old Man. Number 9. Paul Bettany, Jarvis A very astute observation, sir. Perhaps if you intend to visit other planets, we should improve the exosystems. You didn't see Paul Bettany in Iron Man, but he played a very important role in the hit film. The British actor used his voice talents to bring Jarvis to life. He added elegance and personality to Tony Stark's personalized AI system. Fans didn't know it at the time, but Bettany was setting himself up for a long and fruitful relationship with Marvel Studios. Following his work in Iron Man, he appeared in numerous other Avengers films, eventually portraying Vision on the big screen and in the Disney Plus show WandaVision. Beyond his work in the MCU, Bettany has also appeared in Legion, The Tourist, Transcendence, and more. Assuming that implanting an electrode into his brain doesn't actually kill him, and that this works. Although he has been in many hits, nothing comes close to the epic size and success that started with his role in Iron Man. Number eight, Stanley, Hugh Hefner lookalike. The great Hef. Of course, we can't forget Marvel founder Stan Lee, who appeared in the film as someone mistaken for Playboy creator Hugh Hefner at a party. It was a brief appearance by Lee, but it was celebrated by all Marvel fans who loved the cheerful and enthusiastic comic book icon. Appearing in Marvel films was something that Lee did many times in the years ahead. After the success of Iron Man, Lee was seen with cameos in Captain America, Thor, multiple Avenger films, and so many more. Oh man, I am so fired. He was still showing up in the movies until his passing in 2018. Fans of the movies love to see Lee in his fun, cheerful cameos, and he's still missed and remembered to this day. Number seven, Sean Tube, Yinsen. Well, apparently not enough for this place. They speak Arabic, Urdu, Dari, Pashtu. In the film, the titular Iron Man was inspired by none other than Sean Tube, played Ho Yinsen, the scientist who helped Tony Stark build the first superhero suit and then ultimately sacrificed his life to save him. Tube's performance added a poignant and human element to the film, but obviously he only appeared in the first film. After Iron Man came out, Tube continued to have a successful career in film and television. He appeared in The Kite Runner, based on the best-selling novel, and in The Last Airbender, directed by M. Night Shyamalan. He also had a recurring role in the TV series Homeland, amongst other TV shows and movies. Madison, I wish to apologize for the precautions we had to take in bringing you here. I understand. Tube continues to get a decent amount of work in the industry, appearing in films such as Best Picture Winter Crash and The Nativity Story. His career may not have reached the heights it did after Iron Man, but he's still a hard-working character actor. Number 6. Clark Gregg, Agent Phil Coulson I'm Agent Phil Coulson with the Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistics Division. That's quite a mouthful. I know. Clark Gregg played Agent Phil Coulson, a character who became a fan favorite due to his understated humor, loyalty, and place in the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In many ways, he was the most important character in the film. After Iron Man, Gregg reprised his role in several MCU films, including Iron Man 2, Thor, The Avengers, and Captain Marvel. Gregg's portrayal of Coulson became so popular that he was given a leading role in the TV series Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. If you forgot everything we went through, I guess that means you died again. I died? Again? The show explored the adventures of the S.H.I.E.L.D. team and allowed Greg to further develop the character. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was well received and ran for seven seasons, solidifying Greg's place in the MCU. In addition to his work in the MCU, Greg appeared in other films and TV shows. He had roles in 500 Days of Summer and Much Ado About Nothing, a modern adaptation of Shakespeare's play directed by Joss Whedon. He is also a talented filmmaker and wrote and directed the films Choke, starring Sam Rockwell, and 2013's Trust Me. 
Number five, John Favreau. Happy Hogan. Hogan, what on earth drive. For? Cheeseburger first. Clark Gregg was quite important to the film and its sequels, but so was John Favreau, who not only directed Iron Man, but also played Happy Hogan, Tony Stark's loyal bodyguard and friend. Favreau's direction was instrumental in setting the tone for the MCU, and he continued to be a significant figure in the franchise. He reprised his role as Happy Hogan in several MCU films, including the Iron Man sequels, Spider-Man Homecoming, Spider-Man Far From Home, and Spider-Man No Way Home. Beyond his acting and directing roles in the MCU, Favreau directed and produced other successful films. He directed Iron Man 2 in the live-action adaption of The Jungle Book, which was a critical and commercial success. He also directed The Lion King, another live-action adaption, and performed incredibly well at the box office. Favreau expanded his influence in the realm of streaming television with The Mandalorian on Disney+. Why should we lay our lives down yet again? Because we are Mandalorians! As a creator and executive producer, he played a crucial role in the show's success which received widespread acclaim and revitalized interest in the Star Wars franchise. He has now moved on from the MCU to Star Wars, another massively popular series he's put his stamp on. Number 4. Terrence Howard, James Rhodey Rhodes Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present this year's Apogee Award to Mr. Tony Stark. In Iron Man, Terrence Howard played James Rhodey Rhodes, the close friend and confidant of Tony Stark. Ideally, Howard would have stuck around in subsequent films and would have earned even more screen time. However, due to contract disputes and reported conflicts over salary, Howard did not return for the sequels. The role of Rhodey was recast with Don Cheadle, who went on to portray the character in future MCU films. After Iron Man, Howard continued to work in both film and television. He starred in Hustle & Flow, which earned him an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor before Iron Man, and he remained incredibly active in the industry. He appeared in films like The Princess and the Frog and in Red Tails, a film about Tuskegee Airmen. Howard's most notable roles post-Iron Man was in the television series Empire, where he played Lucius Leon, a musical mogul with a complicated past. You violated a $4 million NDA, and I'm going to sue you for every damn penny you got. The show was a massive hit and earned Howard critical acclaim and several award nominations. In 2019, Howard announced that he was retiring from acting after the end of Empire, although he later appeared in projects such as Cutthroat City. His announcement left fans speculating about his future endeavors. These days, he's best known for some questionable and sometimes inflammatory statements he's made online and in interviews. Number 3. Jeff Bridges, Obadiah Stane, Iron Monger Listen now, uh, take it slow, all right? I think I got the board right where we want to. You got it. All right. Every superhero movie needs a supervillain, and the first Iron Man film got a great one thanks to Jeff Bridges. Bridges played the antagonist Obadiah Stane, a former business partner of Tony Stark, who becomes the villain Iron Monger. Already a very popular and well-established star in Hollywood, Bridges continued to enjoy a successful acting career after Iron Man hit the screen. In fact, just a few years later, Bridges won an Academy Award for Best Actor for his role in Crazy Heart, where he played a down-and-out country singer. His performance was widely acclaimed and it marked a high point in his outstanding career. Bridges also starred in other notable films, including True Grit. His performance earned him another Academy Award nomination. He appeared in Tron Legacy, reprising his role from the original Tron that debuted back in 1982. He also popped up in Hell or High Water, which earned him yet another impressive Oscar nomination. Who's that? I'm an old friend of your husband. Ex-husband. In addition to his film work, Bridges is known for his philanthropy and activism. He's a spokesman for the No Kid Hungry campaign, which aims to end childhood hunger in America. In 2020, Bridges announced that he had been diagnosed with lymphoma, but he remained positive and continued to share updates on his health with his fans. His resilience and optimistic spirit endeared him even more to his admirers. He's still working hard to this day, and was most recently seen in the hit FX drama, The Old Man. Number two, Gwyneth Paltrow, Pepper Potts. A few tears for your long lost boss? Tears of joy. I hate job hunting. Yeah, vacation's over. Gwyneth Paltrow played Pepper Potts, Tony Stark's loyal assistant and eventual love interest. Following Iron Man, she reprised her roles in subsequent MCU films, including Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3, The Avengers, Spider-Man Homecoming, Avengers Infinity War, and Avengers Endgame. At the time of the film's release, Paltrow was already an Oscar winner for her work in Shakespeare in Love. Her performance in Iron Man was consistently praised, and critics and fans said it added a grounded and emotional element to the superhero film. Outside the MCU, Paltrow shifted her focus towards her lifestyle brand Goop, which she founded in 2008. Goop started as a weekly newsletter and evolved into a full-fledged lifestyle brand, offering wellness advice, beauty products, fashion, and more. 
It has faced its fair share of controversies, but Goop has grown significantly over the years, and Paltrow remains a prominent figure in the wellness industry. In addition to her business ventures, Paltrow continued to act in films and television. She appeared in Contagion, a thriller about a global pandemic, and in the TV series The Politician. I'm so sad. I'm only who I want to be when I'm in relation to you. That's too much pressure to put on me. Her acting roles may have slowed down a bit over the last decade, but Gwyneth Paltrow remains one of the most well-known and well-respected performers in the movie industry. Number one, Robert Downey Jr., Tony Stark, Iron Man. For lack of a better option, dummy is still on fire safety. If you douse me again and I'm not on fire, I'm donating you to City College. Of course, at the center of it all was Iron Man himself, Tony Stark. The film's main character was portrayed by Robert Downey Jr., whose entire career was revived when director John Favreau cast him. Downey's portrayal of Tony Stark Iron Man became iconic, cementing his status as a Hollywood A-lister and completing a major turnaround after years of legal and drug problems. After Iron Man, he reprised his role in numerous MCU films and became the clear centerpiece of the entire cinematic universe, including Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3, and all four Avenger movies, among others. His performance was lauded for bringing depth, humor, and charisma to the character. Even Downey has revealed that he thinks it's the ultimate role in his illustrious career. Outside of the MCU, Downey Jr. starred in several successful films. He played Sherlock Holmes in Guy Ritchie's adaptations, both of which were well-received and led to plans for a third installment. He also appeared in The Judge, which showcased his dramatic acting skills. You guys have a low opinion of Judge Palmer? Because when your field officer is filling out his incident report, I'm going to be very helpful, helpful as possible. After years of being beloved by other Hollywood stars, Downey received the ultimate honor in 2024 when he won his first Oscar for his performance in Christopher Nolan's epic atomic bomb biopic, Oppenheimer. Beyond acting, Robert Downey Jr. became an advocate for various social causes and environmental initiatives. He launched the Footprint Coalition, an organization aimed at using advanced technologies for environmental sustainability. His time in the MCU has come to an end, at least for now but he will always be considered a founding father of the wildly successful series of films.